This is a tribute to the great women with and before me in the Negros Climate Movement. The youth, the mothers, the workers, and defenders of all kinds who continue to pave the way not only for climate justice, but for social justice and true liberation, one victory at a time. There is a rich history of resistance from the hands of these women, the same hands whose magic provided love and care. I saw it in kindergarten teachers making sure to prepare a meal for her family before she wiped the tears of a little boy inside the classroom. The farmers looking out for their crops under the scorching heat of the sun and then tucking their children to sleep under the pale light of the moon. The lore keepers and wisdom keepers who hold the pen in the heart of the village and Babai lands who heal you with both hands. In many instances in my life, I had to learn over and over that growing up in a patriarchal society leaves you with a small rage inside your body that starts out like an ink spill, a dot at first, but leaking the next, growing spikes and hands from the center. It's a rage so ancient even I have trouble figuring out where it stung first. Was it at home as a child? When I saw how my mother raised us with blood, sweat, and tears? Or was it the time I understood how many bruises a man's violence can paint on your skin one summer night? But what happens next? What happens after you've arrived at that awareness and reached the part where the fruit of the cycle has landed to you? Do you safe keep it like a flower? Or a weapon? Like a knife? Or both? The answers came to me when I found my place in solidarity, along with other women who have kept their own flowers and knives. There is a gentle revolution born in the spaces we occupy, just like our physiques mirroring our environment's diverse elemental beauty, even in language. We are flowers, we are fresh fruits, the moon cycle, wombs as portals between two spiritual worlds. But there is rage inside the earth's very core too. A pulsing repulsion against the hands of men who take and take and take in the cruel name of colonialism, imperialism, and patriarchy. I sat through a boat ride thinking about how, if the sea were a girl, the engine-induced ripples probably feel like unwanted touches on her skin. Never-ending vibrations from just passers. Just like how negotiation halls and discussion tables are dominated by men from fossil fuel industries and capitalists who face each other with lifted chins and straight postures. They, after all, have nothing to fear. They, after all, are not the ones who bear the brunt of this crisis. Despite everything, I am forever in awe of the women defenders who continue to endure the struggle. From the very first successful anti-coal campaign led by Romana de los Reyes in 1997, with mothers who organized and took to the streets carrying their children, ready to give what they must to protect their communities from four coal projects, to another victory declaring Negros as coal-free in 2019, up until our most recent win against a proposed fossil gas power plant, I have seen and known a Negrosanon movement that is difficult to tie down. But there are still treacherous spaces, even in the movement, where real change is supposed to take place. With the Philippines already being one of the top countries that is deadly for environmental defenders, it is infuriating to realize how you have been made invisible and under multiple threats inside a movement of your own. Despite this, there's creative resistance in our individual lives, like tidying off traditional roles and heteronormative ways by fostering community care, breaking free from toxic cycles of overworking and counting capacities, 
because in a system that benefits from our exhaustion, our rest and gentleness are radical in our pursuit to true liberation. We are angry, yes, but in the same measure, we remain hopeful with each other, softer, kinder. We brave this to claim power, one that comes from the people. We brave this so as to no longer remain an afterthought.